Hi everyone, we'll be starting in just a few minutes. I'm just letting everybody else kind of file in. Thank you. Hey everyone, we're gonna give it about one more minute and then we'll get started. Hi all, thank you so much for joining our webinar today on how to sell more security services with our security audit tool. This will be presented by Justin Gilbert, our Senior Director of Channel Marketing. I would like to kick us off with a few housekeeping notes. We'll have time for Q&A at the end, but please submit any questions in the Q&A box at the bottom at any point. This recording will be sent out to everyone. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to partners at zixcorp.com. Thank you. Okay, so before I get into this, because we want to give people who are just now logging in, because Outlook's just reminding them, uh, I want to do something a little different that I didn't tell anybody about uh, on the panelists uh, on this side. Um, I'm going to give you my email address. I want you to send me a picture of whatever the weirdest thing is on your desk. And so for me, that's this solar powered cat. So my email address is jg, I'm sorry, jgilbert at zixcorp dot com and I really want your weirdest picture of what you have on your desk so that way I can post it on LinkedIn and a big collage of all of your craziness all in one place so yeah that's gonna get this is gonna get recorded by the way so people who are listening to this after the fact can do the same thing and for posterity I'll record this so we always have this uh, to, to live in infamy all right um, here we go so we're gonna cover uh, a little bit about who we are for those that are new to uh, who, uh, you know, who uh, Zix App River is, uh, we're gonna cover some of the threat landscape. This is one of my favorite parts. The threat landscape will show you some of the things that you need to know about for your customers. It helps you to be able to sell more effectively to them if you know the threats that they are facing today. Uh, and then we're gonna show you how to uncover some of those security gaps with a, a really cool security audit tool that uh, we'll be giving you guys uh, access to uh, as part of the offer of this, uh, of this uh, uh, webinar, and then uh, we're going to do a uh, we're going to show you the tools that we have available to do that, and then we're going to do the drawing for uh, what was it again? The what what are we giving away? We're giving a brand new car. What was it, Olivia? I can't the remember. The Oculus Quest VR headset. Oculus Quest, cool. So we're going to give away that at the end of this. Um, so for any of uh, any of the App River or Zix employees, Zix App River employees who are listening, sorry, you won't be able to get that. 
notes. My bad. All right, let's dive right in. So um, first things first, uh, who we are, what we do. Uh, so um, you know, you can see the list of uh, different services we offer along the bottom there. I'm not going to dive into each and every one of those, but uh, it's important to note that, you know, 40% of all healthcare organizations rely on Six App River. 30% uh, of all banks, 100% uh, of all of the FFIC regulators, uh, the SEC, uh, you know, we, we just have, you know, when it comes to compliance and security and encryption, uh, we basically have you know, uh, corner the market on providing uh, care and service to just a huge swath of the compliance-based industry. And so if you have customers who would need compliance or security, we'd likely have things that would be able to help them uh, quite easily. So once again, I'm not going to go into all of this stuff. Uh, you can read those on the bottom. Uh, and if, if it's anything around, uh, you know, security or compliance or Office 365 now, Microsoft 365, uh, we can help you with that. All right, so we are going to jump right in. But as we do, I want to get, uh, I want to, I want to show you some of the threats that have kind of hit a lot of customers um, as of uh, as of the last six months or so. And so I want to do a poll. Can we get a poll up? Uh, it's the uh, basically in the past six months, how many uh, how many of your customers have had business email compromise attacks that you know of? Uh, zero to, you know, zero to nine, 10 to 19, 20 plus. Uh, so answer that real quick and I'll, uh, I'll uh, share some of the results so you guys can see how your uh, fellow people are, uh, what they're experiencing. Wow. It's, uh, so what's kind of crazy is it's either on the very, very high end or very low end. It looks like, all right, it's starting to stabilize out. We're getting more answers. What do we got here? All right. Um, so it looks like the majority have had less than, you know, less than nine attacks, thank goodness. Uh, but there's something like about, I'd say it's about 15%-ish that have over 10. Um, all right, so that's good to know. So we're gonna go ahead and end that poll and move right along. Um, so when it comes to threat landscape, uh, you know, obviously if, if you were taking this from someone who's like selling hot dogs on the, on the, you know, on the street as a vendor, you're not really gonna believe it much, but you know, uh, Six App River has been doing uh, this for quite a long time, 18 years of total experience uh, with uh, a team of analysts that uh, create tons of rules. They identify threats. I'm going to go into some of the ones. Actually, uh, we just got off of a call uh, the other day. And uh, with that call, uh, they actually went over a bunch of the new threats, which is why, we've, uh, why we have some of this. Uh, and, you know, I mean, if you, if you think about what this, you know, some of the numbers, these numbers are huge. And so they're hard to wrap your head around like 7.4 billion social engineering attacks blocked, uh, $26 billion in uh, business email compromise losses around the world. Uh, when you think about some of those numbers, they're huge, but, you know, it just kind of goes to show that we have a huge team of security and compliance professionals that are, that are you know, basically do nothing other than uh, protect our partners' customers. Uh, we write something like three to four thousand rules a day uh, to do uh, to do nothing but that. And while we have uh, the ability to block zero-day threats, we have the ability to kind of take that a step further and are blocking things that most competitors aren't seeing just because of the way we have some of our systems built. So let's go into some of uh, some of those threats that are out there. And I want to start off with something that's really kind of interesting that always blows my mind. And I think a lot of people don't really get the chance to be able to see this, um, which is it's easy to think about these uh, these attackers and hackers and all these other people out there as this you know dark shady you know web of people who aren't you know really in the in the real world like they're living on the dark web you know that you hear about or that you might have you know read about, but these guys exist uh, out on the plain web. They're able to buy things on the plain web. Uh, for instance, this fishing kit's for sale. This is for sale on a site that's hosted by Cloudflare. I mean, Cloudflare is a massive company that you know has a security as part of their as part of their uh, their core uh, focus, and they have customers uh, of theirs who are hosting pages like this. Uh, you know, this one example has two hundred different kinds of kits for whatever you you want. However, you want to attack uh, you know a particular company or a particular type of company. Uh, they sell things for Excel, Google Docs, DocuSign. And these are pre-built phishing sites, right? Like, so the attackers don't even have to have the skill and know-how on how to attack. They, they can buy from a site like this 
uh, pre-built fishing sites. All they have to do is bring their own infrastructure so they can you know, load this up into an Azure environment uh, quite readily and attack. And that's called, uh, it's called living off the land type of attack uh, where you attack a, you know, let's say something like Office 365 customers from an Azure uh, infrastructure. Um, so they can buy the pre-built phishing, uh, they download the zip, uh, deploy it to the server, and they put it wherever they want. Uh, they, they only have to enter, I think it's one, one set of things they have to actually enter, which is where they want their credentials that they harvest to be, you know, to be put in at, uh, like an Excel doc or on a, uh, on a server somewhere. Um, and what's crazy is that if you look at some of these, uh, they even, uh, they even offer things like uh, validation of email addresses. So they'll validate the email addresses uh, to be sure that they're legit. So somebody doesn't enter like a Gmail address on an Office 365 page. Uh, and this is all, you know, once again, this is not on the dark web. This is a website like our, you know, our security researcher went right to the website and showed us where we can find all this. Um, and there's companies like this, there's Dorian Docs, there's a bunch of other uh, companies like this that uh, offer this out on the clear web. Uh, no, no dark web, no onion browser, none of that stuff needed. Um, this is an example of one of the ones that you can buy. Now, for example, you know, this, if you're a security professional, this is quite obvious to you because the URL is uh, quite obviously not a Microsoft URL. But what you don't see in this one screenshot, and it never really, you know, it's never really easy to show this on a presentation, is that if you go to like a lot of Microsoft sites, there actually are videos playing in the background. So that this screenshot that you see here, this is a screenshot, but in reality, this site that we went to, uh, which I don't know if it's still live, but this site is actually a full video being played. So it's a full background video. Um, and so it looks very realistic. I mean, this is, you know, I, a lot of people don't know, but you know, I, I uh, used to work at App River. I left for about a year and just came back. And a year and a half ago, when I gave these same sorts of presentations, uh, this sort of thing, this level of sophistication in website of having, uh, you know, having this type of site look this good just didn't exist. And so in the past year, these attackers have really stepped up their game. Uh, for instance, uh, if you click on, you know, download documents or whatever, this takes you to a harvest, uh, you know, to a credential harvesting uh, area. And uh, when you get here, you enter, you know, the email address, the password, and Obviously, when you click view files, that takes that then immediately sends that information over to the uh, the uh, attacker's uh, you know pre-designated area. But what what this doesn't show because once again it's a screenshot is you see that advertisement in the upper right up there in the background. That was once again another video playing in the background. It was a full Microsoft advertisement that made this look and feel like a like a, a legitimate website. Uh, so that's the thing, you know, uh, obviously the URL, they can't get around that all the time, but if they can make the site look and feel realistic, your customers will and do fall for it on a regular basis. And this was all created by someone with almost no development skills. So they didn't have to have a ton of background in, uh, you know, in, uh, in product, man you know, product development or anything like that. These guys just went online and bought this and put it up themselves. All right. So this is another type of attack called living off the land, uh, you know, business email compromise attack. Uh, this is one that our, our security researchers captured. Uh, you know, we've obfuscated the email address to protect the innocent. Uh, uh, this is, you know, the, the company or the, uh, and we call them companies sometimes, but the actual group that puts this out, this is a, a really powerful threat group. Uh, and they change up their tactics uh, hourly. Uh, this is a, they have a, you know, a team of developers that are constantly re, uh, redoing their, uh, their attack methods to address, uh, you know, uh, when, their, when their stuff is getting uh, caught by filters more often. Um, now, this one doesn't look like something that a lot of people would fall for, but if you look at this, you see how it says invoice up here? This is more obvious because this is a, a dark background, but if your email client, like let's say you're using Outlook, is a, is a, has a white background in it, um, this would look like a download link to you. So when you click on this, you would expect that an invoice PDF would open up inside of Outlook or download. Uh, when in reality, this is actually nothing more than an image of something that you would expect to see. So it's an actual image that links out to this typeform.com address. And this typeform, this is a typeform.com is a legitimate company, you know, legitimate site. This is a living off the land attack because they're using legitimate uh, hosting companies and legitimate uh, services to be able to host their content in. And so this one looks legit. It looks like it could be something that uh, you would click on. Um, honestly, it took us a minute to, to realize that this was an image when someone showed it to me. 
uh, and when I was when I saw it, it was on a white background. So this one we we made it uh, on a dark background, so you'd have a, a little bit more clear representation of where the image starts. Uh, and this is that same thing. So when you click on that, the idea of a business email compromise attack is to take you to a site. It's to get you to go somewhere. Now, uh, on the right here, uh, there's an example of that type form address. You can see where it took you right to this type form address. You put in your password. This one is actually one of the, you know, less obvious or the, the more obvious uh, attacks. You know, this one barely looks like it's a Microsoft site. But the thing is, they probably paid five, ten bucks for this uh, template and they threw it up. So they didn't have to spend much and they still probably get a ton of people who put in their password. On the left here, you see a, a little bit more of a nuanced approach. Um, instead, uh, this approach takes you to a document that's posted on a OneDrive or on a OneNote in a OneDrive. And then at that point, when you click on it, and it's hard to see it in this bottom right down here, uh, we're hovering over this, uh, this link here in this bottom right, it takes you, you know, it looks like that document might be here in OneNote, but that is actually taking you to yet another site to the true harvesting uh, attack site. It's taking you to, what is it, uh, some orchard.buzz slash Hector site. And so what's great for the attackers uh, in using an attack method like this is if for some reason uh, Microsoft shuts down this, because this is hosted on Microsoft, if Microsoft shuts down this OneDrive that's associated with this OneNote account, all the attacker has to do is spin up yet another OneDrive account, uh, another OneNote, and put in that link again, send out another massive emails, and voila, they're ready to go. Their original site is not impacted by Microsoft shutting down this one intermediary step. Uh, this one is an example of, uh, it's called Agent Tesla. Uh, Agent Tesla is a remote access Trojan. Basically, it's designed to you know, gain access to a system and start uh, deploying different types of software packages. And I'll get to more of that in a second one, or in a second. But I wanted to show you here uh, the, you know, these, these attackers are not, you know, they're, they're not on a single language. These are, these are entire development teams. These are companies who, whose job and occupation is to attack people out in the world. They have multilingual, uh, you know, uh, speakers there purely to be able to develop content uh, that goes out into the language that, it, that it's supposed to go in. Uh, you know, I, you know, it's easy to spot the things where, you know, there's a Nigerian prince who's, you know, wants to give you a million dollars, but it's much more difficult when something is in your native language, when it's, uh, it has all of the, all of the markers where it looks like it's actually something that was written by a native speaker. And so that's where, uh, you know, a lot of people kind of uh, don't expect to see something where it looks like it's written by a native speaker in your language and it's written by someone who customized this for you. Uh, but these guys do this. This is, uh, again, from a, a very large threat group. Uh, and this, again, uh, Agent Tesla bought on the web. In fact, these guys are, you know, are, are interesting in that uh, uh, where, where the place where you can buy this one, uh, you can pay Bitcoin for it, so you know you don't get caught. Uh, but the way they the way they make this work is this is this is malware as a service. Uh, so you know while you might be selling software as a service, your your you know the people that we're fighting against they have created their own malware as a service. So you can choose a six month option, a three month option, one month. If you pay one month, it's twenty dollars a month. And the interesting thing about this is that they offer support. <laughs> they offer support. They offer uh, things like uh, reviews where you can go see how something, you know, how well something has worked for other attackers. Um, they offer, uh, you know, post follow-up development where if for some reason uh, something stops working, they'll continue to do more development on it. So these guys are entire teams supporting products that are basically the antithesis of what you know someone like Zig Zap River is, uh, where we are developing uh, you know things to protect against this. These guys are actually uh, these guys are developing malware and phishing campaigns, and it's all as a service. Um, and this one's a pretty interesting one because you just plug in your own template, an email, uh, and uh, you know once again the backend infrastructure. Um, uh, so you just put in you know you can see on the left here what you have to put in. You put in your email address, your password. Your host name uh, for accessing uh, things like your, uh, your your web host, uh, I think it is, uh, and that's it. Um, they have their own devs who update this frequently. Um, they're a big player this year uh, because of the remote working that's going on in the space. So if one of your customers is hit, uh, there's a lot of them uh, that right now who are remote workers who are being hit from the agent Tesla malware. 
Um, and really the, the, the goal of this is not to put a piece of malware on the system. Like nobody cares about a piece of malware. The goal of this is that once the malware is in place, once this, uh, uh, this I'm sorry, this is a, an actual Trojan. Once this Trojan is in place, it now has remote access to that machine. And so their first goal of these attackers is to find out who, uh, who it is, whose machine they landed on. Did they land on, uh, you know, I guess a, an administrative assistant to a CEO or did they land on the CEO's machine? Or did they land on a banking, uh, a, you know, a banking officer's, uh, you know, machine? And if they did, the next step is they find out if it's worthwhile to then, uh, you know, install additional packages. And so if it's a banker, they would then install, there's very, very specific banking Trojan, uh, you know, packages they would then start installing to start tracking all sorts of other things that that banker might do. So they have custom packages based on the type of person's machine they, that they actually gain access to. Uh, and then they'll retarget that person with other things. They'll go into their, you know, to their mail accounts and they'll, you know, steal all their contacts and they'll start targeting their contacts uh, after they've kind of, you know, uh, gotten everything they can out of that machine. So there's a whole laundry list of other things that they'll go after. Uh, the last thing I want to show you in terms of types of attacks, uh, this is called uh, Drydex. Uh, Drydex is a, it, it's a you know, piece of malware. Um, Drydex is the largest, I'm sorry, Drydex is not the uh, malware, Drydex is the actual sender, this is the organization. Drydex is the largest sender of malware in the world. Uh, and the thing is, uh, everyone in the US uh, government and everywhere else, they know who this is. Uh, their actual company name is Evil Corp. It's a Russian group that the FBI has placed a $5 million bounty on. Uh, the two leaders of the organization are in fairly close with certain Russian organizations. Uh, in fact, one of their one of the leaders is married to the daughter of someone from the FSB. Uh, and so, you know, these guys are well known, but they're untouchable because of who they're related to. Uh, you know, there's a, you know, it's a very well established, you know, this one is the biggest Trojan of the year, uh, you know, that is made by these guys. Uh, they're very well established, very effective banking Trojans. Uh, they have uh, full stack dev developers on payroll, and they're constantly changing and evolving hourly. I mean, they're, these, this, this is not something where they, you know, it's like the old days where months would go by and they have a piece of software out there that's not working. They're updating their software almost as fast as, you know, the OS uh, manufacturer or OS uh, developers are. Uh, this one is, a, is an interesting one. Uh, I think, is this the one here? Uh, I'm checking my notes. Yeah, this is the one where uh, it came in and uh, it was missed entirely. This was a zero day attack. Uh, and it came in and was missed entirely by uh, 50 engines that we ran it through. Uh, so we ran this through 50 different engines and every one of them, these are all different security engines that are out there with it. All of them missed it uh, because it was a zero day exploit. Uh, but the way we have our, our, um, our email security platform built is it actually looks at more than just predefined malware and packages. It looks at, uh, it looks much deeper. It looks to see if there's suspicious traffic patterns behind that. And uh, we look at suspicious traffic patterns are across all of our customers. We have 80,000 customers, so we have a huge data set to be able to pull from. And then when we look at that, we're able to kind of determine, oh, well, there's these issues over here. We're seeing like a rising trend in some type of, uh, some type of malware. And we're able to stop something, put it on hold, and we notify our security team when we see those suspicious traffic patterns. So they're able to stop something before it ever gets to the mailbox. So it's before even a zero day exploit, we're stopping it when we see just traffic patterns uh, because we have such a large number of customers using our services. Um, so that's, uh, so this one, once again, this one hits, you know, the Drydex uh, and the team there, they hit daily uh, and we have zero day exploits from them on a regular basis that we're stopping using our traffic pattern analysis. Um, all right, so uh, we're up for another security poll here uh, or another, another poll. Um, what percentage, uh, so let me, can we get that one up? What percentage of your customer base uses Microsoft 365 purely uh, I'm sorry, yeah, that's the first question. What percentage of your customer base uses Microsoft 365? So we're going to see who's still paying attention by how many answer this poll. Surprisingly, it's almost everyone. Um, so what percentage of your customer base uses Microsoft 365? And the next question, uh, for those who are already skipping ahead, love it. Uh, of those Microsoft customers, how many of them rely only on the built-in native email security built within uh, Microsoft? All right. Dun, 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 dun. Should we do the Jeopardy thing? So I'm a big fan of Jeopardy. So 
but I'm also an old guy. Uh, let's see here. All right, looks like uh, it's kind of slowing down here. So it looks like, you know, uh, something like 40% uh, of you said uh, almost all of your customers are on 365, another 25, 30-ish percent said over 50% are. And then uh, see down below on the next question, how many rely on the native email security only? Uh, there's 43% of you who said that, uh, you know, only about 25% or less of your customers are relying 100%. And 33% of you, so one third of you said that uh, almost all of your customers are using that as their, as their sole uh, protection. So let's go into a little bit about email, uh, about some of the tools we have to kind of help you to sell more uh, of, uh, you know, a layered security approach uh, and, uh, you know, and, and what that looks like. All right, so, you know, the, the biggest issue, you know, biggest issues I see, and you guys can definitely correct me if I'm wrong, I love, I love being told I'm wrong, uh, so you can do that in, uh, in the Q&A or in the comments. Uh, we're happy to, uh, Amanda and Olivia, uh, who are panelists, will love hearing uh, where I'm wrong. But in my mind, uh, you know, when it comes to Office 365, there's some problems there, right? Like, you know, there's, you know, Microsoft makes it very easy for customers of yours to move between platform to platform. So there's, you know, uh, without migrations, like the days of having an exchange environment where your customer would have to move and it was a painful process, they likely weren't going to move very often because it was quite challenging. Now they can move from one vendor uh, and or one MSP or one VAR to another within minutes and have no lasting repercussions because there's no migration of data anymore. Another thing is, uh, you know, the, the difficulty in explaining value around, um, around uh, you know, your own services, like being able to have tools and things in place where you can show them all the things you're doing for them. Because in a lot of cases, they feel like, well, I can just go directly to Microsoft. Why do I have to worry about using you? You're not really providing me much more than I can just buy myself and I can pay my cousin Bob to install, you know, 365 this weekend. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously it can't be understated, the uh, margins around 365 for everyone in the stack, for vendors, for partners, uh, uh, and I'm guessing even for Microsoft themselves are just very small, they're very tiny. Uh, no one's making, you know, no one's making a million dollars off of uh, 365 by itself. Uh, most people are making money off of the auxiliary services they sell, including uh, managed services or uh, value added services, something else around that. And then uh, it's, you know, it's, there's so many vendors out there today that it's, it's, you know, trying to choose, you know, who you're going to have in your security stack or who you're going to have in your stack at all. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of fraught with peril because if you back the wrong horse, if you go to the wrong provider, uh, you can end up spending, you know, countless hours and countless, you know, uh, thousands of dollars investing in one platform only to find out it won't be able to support you in your sales and marketing efforts and in your growth goals. Uh, so, uh, you know, what we feel that uh, this tool that I'm going to show you can do is it helps you to increase your wallet share. It helps you to increase your uh, renewal and your, your actual stickiness with customers uh, because it gives you ways to be able to kind of point to those customers and show them how you can, how you, you know, what kind of value you give to them uh, on a regular basis. And it's all, you know, automated. So let me just dive into this here. So uh, this is the Microsoft 365 Security Audit Service. And the idea behind this is that we wanted to, you know, kind of build this around uh, this, this idea around solution sales methodology. So a solution sales methodology, you know, we took what is basically a, you know, a, a security audit and we created tooling around this. Um, and Olivia actually, uh, you know, she, she probably has Nate in the background. Nate's actually one of the guys who works really heavily on this one, uh, on this platform. So uh, if Nate's listening, tell him to cover his ears. Like, I don't want him to hear all the stuff I'm going to say that he'll uh, correct me on. Uh, I've he's one them. of our product managers. Um, and so, you know, we created this tool because really, you know, there, there's other security audits out there, right? Like you can go somewhere else. Microsoft has their own security audit. But what Microsoft's own security audit doesn't provide you is a way to use that information that you gain. And it's a lot. Like all of these tools provide a lot of information. It's a way to use those, to, the, those tools to be able to give you a way and a method to be able to sell and market to your customers to be able to sell more of your own services, to be able to sell your own managed services, your own security services, whatever you need to sell to them, you need tooling and data to be able to provide a customer to make that decision an easy one. If you can provide data to a customer around uh, the issues they have, uh, it's much easier to walk in and say, I'm gonna sell you security services and here's why you need it. 
because you have these gaps currently that you're not solving for. And this is what's going to happen. So solution sales methodology shows the pain that a customer is facing, the impact of not solving that pain, and then it provides actionable ways for you to that you uh, as their partner can solve that for them. So that's what we're going to kind of go into. Before we do, we're going to do uh, another poll here. This one's uh, uh, this one's kind of a, uh, a, little, a little gut check question. Okay, uh, how many of your customers have two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication turned on for their Microsoft uh, services? And so, of course, for some of you who said you have no customers on Microsoft, then this wouldn't be relevant. But for everyone else, uh, let's see how many of your customers have multi-factor authentication. Remember, be honest. <laughs> uh, right here, wrapping up right about where we always see it. Nothing shocking. Okay, so 33% um, of you said less than 25% of your customers have multi-factor or uh, two-factor authentication turned on for their users. And the another 33% said that it's between 25 and 50%. Um, so, uh, you know, the other 33%, uh, you guys are, uh, you guys are uh, hitting your customers hard on getting multi-factor authentication turned on. So I love it. All right, so we ran this audit on a bunch of customers. And I'm gonna show you what this audit is. Um, and this audit, remember, is just one tool in our arsenal. We have, you know, email security, web, uh, I'm sorry, email security, we have archiving, we have uh, email threat protection, we have, uh, in, uh, different types of encryption, uh, archiving for compliance customers, and Office 365. But because we have, we are an Office 365 provider and we're a security provider, we have insights into what's going in those mailboxes. So we do a lot of things. This is just one tool we created for our partners. And our partners uh, get free access to this tool. Um, but our partners get access to it. So we did this uh, report on 82 domains because we wanted to show you across a, a wide swath. These weren't handpicked. Uh, what it looks like uh, that customers are, you know, that your customers are likely facing this as well because the data looks like it's roughly the same. All right, so 82 domains. Uh, of those, about 6,000 or so users and uh, almost 400 admins. And what we found was that 93% um, of those uh, admins, and this is the admins, this is the people with the keys to the kingdom, 93% of those admins had their password set to never expire. 4.4% uh, of them, of the admins. Admins are always some of the worst uh, offenders, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, multi-factor authentication and their own passwords, had uh, multi-factor authentication turned on. And 80% roughly had their passwords older than 90 days. Now, we're not going to ask the question of how old your password is because we don't think that's really fair. And honestly, I want to sell you stuff. So, um, but this is, this is really common, right? Like administrators at companies, typically have uh, you know, uh, these, these massive gaps. And our tool shows you how to see this. So when you walk into a customer site, you can show them you know, that uh, their customer or their administrator who is currently there uh, or whoever they have assigned as administrators have these, uh, these gaps. Um, the other thing uh, that we looked at is the domain, self, the domain itself uh, on the, uh, with the audit tool, uh, 632 forwarding rules, uh, 342 delete rules, move rules, lots of those. So, you know, uh, there's a lot of that, and I'm going to get to why in a minute why any of this matters and how you can use it to sell. Uh, advanced auditing enabled 4.6. So you can read all of these. Uh, you know, you can see that the uh, multi-factor authentication, uh, actually the uh, users had about 1.6%. Um, all right, so why does this matter? Well, first of all, in the administrators, uh, like when it comes to passwords, right, um, their passwords might be fine. Uh, there might be no issues with their passwords being, you know, uh, aging and being old and, and some of these, honestly, when we look at some of these, some of these passwords are something like a year or two old. Uh, they haven't been changed. The reason they matter is because not because their 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 site has been you know hacked, but it's because the number of attacks that are happening out there. I mean, there's been several this year of major breaches where uh, I mean, heck, uh, you know, my Nintendo Switch. I had to go reset my password on my Nintendo Switch and add multi-factor authentication on a gaming console purely because it was you know there was a breach. So the passwords and the, the, you know, the, the issue where your users reuse their passwords in multiple places, you know, when, when you know, attackers are trying to gain access to a mailbox, they're just using automated systems where they go buy a massive list of passwords from a previous breach and then use that and plug that in. So that's why it matters that there should be you know, aging passwords. I'm not telling you anything 
crazier than you there. That's, that's not surprising to anyone. Um, but when it comes to things like, you know, uh, delete rules and forward rules, like why do those matter? Well, you know, forwarding rules is an important thing because uh, one of the ways that attackers will perform an attack is once they gain access to a mailbox, in a lot of cases, they don't actually, they don't actually use the mailbox. They will set up forwarding rules to then go outside to another mailbox. So that way they just gain access to what's going on on the mailbox. You know, they, they will log in, they'll log in one time, set up a forwarding rule and then exit that, uh, exit that mailbox. And that's the only time they ever log in because they just want to gain insight into what's going on. So imagine if someone got inside, you know, a mail system between a uh, controller and finance and was able to gain access to all of the different things inside of there. Uh, so that's a huge, uh, that, that, that's a huge, uh, you know, security hole uh, if you don't know what the forwarding rules are that are there. And in most cases, they're fine, but it only takes one. Uh, delete rules, that's a, that's a very common a type of attack that's used when uh, you want to be able to cover your tracks. Let's say you send out a mail blast from a, a compromised account and you want to be able to delete those. You can set up delete rules whenever things, uh, whenever you, you want to cover your tracks. And then move rules, that's, uh, that's another common attack where you can actually move uh, items to a, to a folder that you then have access to. There's different things you can do there. Uh, when you get down to advanced auditing in the bottom right, this is a free tool that Microsoft provides. Now we give we give this tool, uh, we try to set it up on every user that we can. Microsoft themselves are trying to set it up now on every user, but there's still a ton of customers uh, who don't have advanced auditing enabled. Uh, the last one is inactive mailboxes. Now this is kind of an interesting one because it's, uh, you would think as an organization, we wouldn't want to tell you when you have inactive mailboxes. That's 10% of the mailboxes we investigated they are completely unused. They haven't been used in over a year. Uh, but what's interesting about this is inactive mailboxes are actually a prime target for attackers. If they can gain access to an inactive mailbox, nobody's monitoring it. So if they can gain access and use it to mail out of that domain and to be able to mail out to customers and other people, it's a, it's a, it's a really great area for them to be able to focus. So, uh, so yeah, so inactive mailboxes, I mean, uh, we love that our partners want to pay us uh, for 10% of the mailboxes uh, to, to be unused, but this is also something that, you know, is a, is a security hole. Now, um, when we show this, you know, this is some of the stuff that we show to our partners. I'm going to show you a couple of screenshots of the portal itself uh, where our partners gain access to that. But this is the stuff that our partners gain access to. They gain an admin re uh, role report, which goes over the elevated roles, because here's the other thing. You have all these admins that are, act that are uh, able to access a system, uh, but do they all need the highest level of uh, you know, permissions, or do they need maybe just a, a sub-level permission? Microsoft has, has different uh, administrative uh, permission sets that you're able to give them the right level of privilege. And so this gives you access to that. Um, it also gives you access to all the passwords, all the different things that I showed you on the previous page. Um, on the user report, you gain access to things like unauthorized access. Maybe someone logged in from an IP address uh, that uh, they shouldn't have logged in from. Uh, and, you know, the mailbox report, you're able to, uh, you know, look for things like around forensic investigation, IP address logging, all sorts of stuff uh, that that would help you in kind of tracking down uh, issues and, and you know the ways that people are uh, abusing a system. Uh, forwarding report that helps once again to be able to kind of uh, you know prevent sensitive uh, data leakage. And then an inbox rule report. Uh, this you know once again is to kind of detect uh, compromised accounts. Uh, so yeah, so all of these, and then of course you have a schedule that you can build to automatically run these jobs uh, for you. Uh, so this tool is something that we built for our partners to be able to use. It's a free tool, we don't charge for it. Uh, and we have a, a feature coming in the next month uh, that allows you know, for this tool to be used inside of the portal without you having to reach out to us um, uh, to be used for your customers who are not even on our platform. So if they're not on our 365 platform and you still wanna be able to run this report as a sales tool to be able to sell it to them, now, right now, our partners have to reach out to us. They have to call into us to have us run that report for them uh, for customers who are not on our 365 platform. Uh, but actually, here in the next few weeks, that, that'll be done and built into this tool. So that way, if you as a partner want to be able to email and, or I'm sorry, want to be able to build a uh, sales report to help you talk to a customer about why they need you know, email threat protection and things like that, uh, you'll be able to run that for any customer, even new customers to you, because that's where we see a lot of our partners using this the most is, for customers that are new to you, where you're trying to talk to them about why they should move their business to you, uh, this is a fantastic set of data points to be able to help you do that. 
so this is some of the actual security audits itself. You can see here we have things like the, uh, the security uh, you know, uh, audit tool built right here. You can click start. It's super simple stuff. I'm a salesperson uh, by heart, and it's what I've kind of been doing my whole life. And this is simple enough that I figured it out within about five minutes of looking at it. Uh, you also have the download the report option where you can download any of the reports. Um, after this, if you want, uh, you know, I'm going to get to it in just a second, but uh, you can actually get a full demo of this entire report area. But remember, this is just one free service we offer to our partners to be able to help them sell more security services. Um, and you can use that. You should also use things like those security, um, those security threats that I mentioned earlier on that, uh, the big part of this presentation. Use those uh, to your benefit to show customers the types of attacks that are out there. Uh, we also have a blog that's fantastic that has a ton of security threats always updated. But none of that, none of these tools, none of the things I mentioned, the fact that we do email security, threat protection, all that stuff, none of it matters unless you have really amazing security uh, support backing you up. Uh, we have one of the highest rated support teams. In fact, if you go look out there everywhere on the internet and you look about App River or Zix, you want to find out why people partner with us. It's almost always about support. And it's because our white glove approach, hands down, uh, beats any distributor you're going to you're gonna be in a relationship. If you're with someone like, you know, uh, I don't know, if you're with someone like uh, Tech Data or Inex, or I'm sorry, Tech Data or uh, Cinex or uh, Ingram or wherever, you know, they're, 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 you know, operating on pennies on the dollar is what, is, is what they're operating off of. And so they don't have the ability to provide this really fantastic white glove support model. Uh, and, you know, I mean, this is, you know, another way that we help differentiate ourselves against companies like Proofpoint and Mindcast. So if you have, you know, any partnership with them and you want to know what the big differentiator is, one, we give you the tools to be able to sell more security services around 365. We help you to consolidate that all into one vendor, but then we give you a support infrastructure behind that. All right. So we're going to wrap this up with a couple things. We're going to do Q&A after this. So if you have any questions uh, that haven't been answered. Um, uh, so first question, uh, or would you like a security audit after this call? If you do, the security audit is 100% free. It's not a sales pitch. We're going to do a security audit for you and for one of your customers. So you can use this if you have a really large customer, you've been trying to get to buy more of your security services, even if it's not ours. I hate hearing that, but even if it's not ours, you can get a security audit for free for yourself, for you to just check your own domain out, and then also for one of your customers. Um, so make sure to take advantage of that. Um, and, uh, while you guys are answering that, uh, let's see here, Olivia, do we have a drawing for the winner of brand new Oculus Quest? We do. And hopefully I do not butcher the last name, but it's Ross Dahman. Ross Dahman. Dahman. So we will get in touch with you after to uh, make sure we have the right, um, details to send to you. Cool. All right, so Ross, uh, congratulations. Uh, by the way, uh, finding this online, if you guys go to try to find an, an Oculus Quest right now, <laughs> because so many people are working from home, uh, it is a bear. So I want to give, I want to thank Amanda for uh, shopping all over the world to try to find an Oculus Quest. Um, and it's being shipped right now. So we actually just got confirmation that it's being shipped. So yay. Okay. All right. Now let's move on to last page here, uh, Q&A. Does anybody have any questions that have not been answered? Uh, let's see here. Ross said, thank you. So apparently we didn't butcher his name bad you know, enough that he didn't recognize that he won. Um, all right, let's yes. see here. I any do have, other questions? I do have one question. Um, how much does a security act cost once I become a partner? Uh, yeah, so uh, the security audit is 100% uh, you pay it to me uh, in cash. Uh, you can write your checks to cash. No, it's 100% free. So there's no charge for security audits. They're free. Um, we, you know, uh, when we first built this platform, we wanted to actually, you know, kind of deploy it out there and, and, you know, think about a pricing model. But there was so much value in helping partners that honestly, we just ended up uh, giving it for free. Even the new feature, which allows for you to be able to run this for customers who are not on our platform is going to be 100% free. So no charge. Awesome. Uh, looks like we had uh, Janet came in and said, are the reports able to be branded? You know, uh, Janet, I don't know 100%. I know we're really big on having co-branding available. Uh, Olivia might know, but I don't know that. Um, they are. They can be co-branded. Okay, cool. So they are co-brandable. 
uh, and we have our co-branding built in. In fact, we have a ton of marketing materials and all sorts of other stuff that is you put in your brand one place, one place, and it's you know ready to rock and roll. Brian, I see that you want a security audit, so I saw that. We'll make sure we get you taken care of as well. Um, any other questions? There's one from Mike. We are new to Office 365. Where is the best place to learn security practices uh, for platform? Uh, Microsoft documentation stinks. Um, yeah, so best security practices. Okay, well, so what's interesting is we actually have a ton of uh, training and uh, we, you know, we have, a, you know, like just like everyone else, we have things like, you know, product training, right? But product training is, I don't know, it's, it, it's interesting if you're trying to sell that one product, but uh, we have things where we have these bite-sized lessons. And so they're built out into training courses. Uh, what is the official title for it, Olivia? I can't remember the name of it. It's called uh, our bite-sized uh, lessons. What are they called? Yep, Another they're bite-sized learning tracks. Bite -size Look at that, I got a first try, everyone. So <laughs> um, yeah, when it comes to like, uh, you know, training courses, you want something, you, you want to treat it like a college course, right? Like college courses, are a ton of information, but they're broken up into one hour increments. So you go to a court class for one hour, two hours, whatever. And so we have the same thing, but ours is like three minutes, five minutes. And each of those is very specific to one type of training. So we have some on security, best practices, we have all sorts of stuff. So um, so that's, that's one way that we try to help partners who have that sort of questions. Uh, let's see here. Do you have industry focused tools? Uh, this one's from Eric. Uh, do you have uh, industry focused tools offering sales materials? For instance, I'm interested in healthcare space. Uh, well, by George, we do, Eric. Uh, we have tons of stuff around HIPAA compliance. I mean, HIPAA is a, you know, HIPAA and, and uh, FINRA regulated industries are industries where we have, um, and, and banking, things like that, are industries where we have more content just because they're compliance focused and it's, it's, you know, you have to be able to have white papers and things like that to be able to sell into them. So we have a lot of content for those kind of guys. Um, and, uh, you know, we have things uh, around marketing for you to be able to sell to your customers. But then we also have content for you to be able to kind of learn and digest and kind of become a, you know, more knowledgeable about something. So we have a ton of that uh, in, uh, we have two different platforms. One is our marketing automation platform. You enter your, you know, your brand once and you have all of these branded materials that are built for you within a one click. And then uh, we have our, our training, our partner power portal, uh, PPP, uh, where we have a ton of training and a ton of other materials in there as well. Uh, can we move from Office 365, uh, or can we move Office 365 from uh, other vendor to AppRiver? Yeah, so moving from another vendor to us requires no data move. Uh, so we have a lot of customers who move, let's say from, and I'm not picking on them, uh, you know, I, I, I like most, most of our vendors I get along great with, or most of our competitors. But like, let's say you, uh, you have some business on, uh, I don't know, a platform like uh, Proofpoint or Mimecast and some of your business on Ingram or Tech Data because it's 365. You know, when you have both of those platforms, you basically are not getting the advantage of the amount of revenue you're spending. Like you're spending probably 10 grand across two different platforms, but you're only in a silver partner tier. If you move those to one vendor, like someone like, you know, Six App River, you get to combine that all into one platform and get the benefits of 10 grand worth of spend versus, you know, a couple of grand or with, with each vendor. So moving your 365 is quite easy. We do it every day. We move no boxes to us. Um, and the great thing about 365 migrations is there's no data migration. Your customers will notice almost nothing happening. Uh, let's see here. So what is uh, the new offering DNS? Um, I don't know about that one. Um, is uh, Olivia, do you know anything about a new DNS offering that we have? I haven't seen anything about that. But not 100% sure, but yeah, I can. Don't know about that one, but we'll get you a follow up on that one. Um, uh, Meadow, and I hope I pronounced this right. What is the difference between email threat protection services, which Six offers, and the advanced threat protection, uh, which uh, offers from Microsoft itself? Oh gosh, uh, I'm sure if we had a security expert on here, this is the problem with having me. Uh, we can follow up with you on that one, Meadow. But you know, uh, like I said, I'm fairly new coming back to App River. I can answer in broad terms, but there, it, on specific features that are going to be in each of those, um, I can let our guys uh, follow up with you. So. Some of the big differences is that, you know, this, this is, this is going to sound kind of like a dig, but I promise you it's not. Look at, uh, you know, Satya Nadella. This is the, you know, uh, the big wig at Microsoft, right? And this is all publicly avail available information, but look at where uh, his bonus structure was from 2019 and where he got his bonuses from. His bonuses were around cloud infrastructure, uh, around developing things like, you know, 365, around, you know, the OS. Uh, and then look to see how much his bonuses were around security, 
and around things like that. And this is not a dig on Satya Nadella. This is uh, this is really kind of for you to frame the understanding of why something like Microsoft, uh, you know, which they they have a secure product. I'm not saying it's not secure, but there are gaps in it, right? And when you look at that product and you look at how someone like uh, Satya Nadella, when he's driving uh, the company and what the actual uh, what the uh, you know what the market really cares about, it's a growth of cloud services and not so much a growth of security focused services. They, it's just not their core focus. They don't, it's not like they have this desire to like have people insecure, but what they are focused on is building their, building their, their 365 base, building their Azure base. They're not so much focused on the hyper, you know, uh, hyper focus on the security of uh, the mailbox. And so that's really where, you know, a company like, uh, you know, like Zix App River, uh, comes in because we have a you know a, a long long history of focus exclusively on securing the mailbox and on layering security around it. I mean you know don't get me wrong like I you know there are other companies who do it. There's Proofpoint, there's Mindcast, they're they're great companies. I have no uh, ill will to them. They do it great as well. Uh, and, and you know even they would be better than Microsoft themselves because that's what they do. They're hyper focused on that. The big difference between those companies and ours is that you know with with our platform, uh, we wrap the security around 365 because the mailbox is, uh, because we also are a, a partner with Microsoft on that. Uh, so that's gonna be the difference between us and those competitors. Uh, between us and Microsoft, it's just our, our, our focus on that platform. Uh, Bill asked, uh, what will, and by the way, uh, Meadow, uh, we'll make sure someone follows up with the actual uh, feature differences because I don't wanna lie and uh, say I know that. Uh, what, uh, Bill asks, what will be needed to run the 365 security audit for non app river hosted clients? Will you need the client to create a global admin? No, I don't think it's actually a global admin on their side. It's, um, oh gosh, I forget the term. Uh, it's a, there's basically a link and, and I'm going to butcher this bill. So I apologize, but there's basically a link. It's provide like where you provide temporary um, access. Um, uh, and, uh, once that, once that link is generated, you're able to then, you know, run the security report for them. And it's temporary as in it'll only work once because, you know, we're a security company. We don't want to have access to their mailbox, uh, you know, when they're not hosted with us. So it gives you one-time access to be able to run the audits and then it's, and it's pulled back. So it's a, uh, so, um, Olivia, can we know to have, to get Bill this specific, there's a document we have that we can send you and so you can see. Absolutely. Before. But it's a really minimal sort of thing. There's no, there's not not a crazy amount of stuff. There's definitely no global admin access. Um, we are, uh, so Jim asked, uh, we're currently enjoying significant margin from PAX 8. Last I checked, App River 365 were significantly lower. What are they now? Uh, yeah, honestly, the entire industry is basically the same. I mean, uh, if you go to Synex, Tech Data, Ingram, uh, PAX 8, uh, Microsoft, I'm sorry, not Microsoft. Uh, they, they definitely are not like most industry, uh, or SureWeb. Those are the major players, and all the players have uh, a range that ranges from somewhere around six to ten percent on the bottom side to somewhere between sixteen to eighteen uh, on the high side, um, and uh, all of us end up in the same thing. So, if a partner uh, wants to sell a bunch of our services and they want to bring their, you know, they have they want to bring their revenue over, we we have tier structures that are almost identical to everyone else because they're all everyone. It's it's a and think about it this way: Microsoft three sixty five is a commodity. Remember what I said earlier? Nobody's making money on on uh, 365, nobody, not us, not you for the most part. I mean, nobody really is. You're making money on the service you sell around it. Um, and so, you know, we tier our structures just like everyone because there's really no, nobody's trying to compete on that anymore. Uh, everyone's kind of standardized around roughly the same price points. So if you're getting, let's say 16 points from Microsoft, from Pax8, you'll get roughly 16 points from us based on the tier and volume you bring in. Uh, we have some partners at 18. Heck, we have a couple at 20 just because they bring on, you know, so much uh, so much business to us around IP and other things, uh, which, you know, that's what Microsoft gives. Um, uh, I see Ross had a question. Uh, is there a tier pricing schedule based on volume? If so, what are the price points? Uh, yeah, so we have a pricing point schedule. Um, uh, you know, the price, I mean, the price points are really uh, on our IP. Just depends on the product. Um, you know, they range all the way from you know email security at around like a buck retail to, uh, gosh, I mean we have some really advanced archiving type things that are uh, um, that are, you know go up into the you know uh, above ten dollar a seat range. And then on three sixty five, uh, Ross, that that uh, that prices you know the pricing schedule isn't really it's built more on margin. It's not really built on uh, so it's margin off of Microsoft uh, retail. Uh, which is where most of the uh, the vendor industry is standardized around. 
Uh, someone else asked, um, oh, no, sorry, we got, uh, oh, uh, this one is, I think it was for you, Bill, had asked a question um, about the, it's called delegated admin permission. So it's not global admin, it's called delegated admin permissions. Um, let's see if we got anything else, anyone else? Uh, anything else here? All right, awesome. It looks like that is everything. So, hey, if you guys have any more questions or need anything else, uh, I appreciate you guys giving us so much of your time. I know we've taken about you know 20 minutes over. I really appreciate you giving us so much of your time. Uh, reach out to us at partners at zixcorp.com. I will see those. Uh, my two panelists uh, that are with me will see those, and we'll be able to uh, help you out with any questions that you have as follow. Thank you so much for your time. Please take advantage of the security audits. Make sure you get those. They're free. They're even if, if for one of your prospects, even if you use it for one of those, just to help you sell one more thing. Thanks a lot, all. Thank you. Bye-bye.